Welcome, welcome, welcome to Crashes and Taxes. I am your host for this podcast, Rebecca Walser. So glad you guys are joining us today. And remember, we do um, also do the video. So if you wanna see me talking to you, instead of just hearing me talk to you, please check out the video version of the podcast. Today, I'm gonna actually show you something. So if you're on audio only, you're gonna actually miss out a little bit because I am gonna hold something up to show people what I'm talking about. And today, our topic, as you've seen from the title, is when is it time to ditch an advisor that's actually performing well for you? And that might sound like a really crazy question. If my advisor is performing, why would I want to ditch him? And it's really because of your um, financial life cycle. So if you think of like climbing a mountain, and I like to use climbing Mount Everest as kind of the example that everyone can relate to, you know, there are two distinct phases of climbing the mountain. Um, and, and so that those two phases include really the ascension phase, right, and then the planting of that flag I made it to the top I summited so the summit is an event and then the second part of climbing that mountain is the descent or the dissension phase right we're climbing up and then we're climbing down I don't think people would go uh, well some people would because we know lots of people have actually died climbing Mount Everest as it's a lifelong goal and they want to do it and if it's cost them their life they're willing those people are true climbers but most people that value their life over the climb itself um, don't want to climb just to pan a flag if they are going to get stuck up there and they cannot get safely down so when you want to ditch your advisor who's performing well for you is if they only can get you up the mountain if they can only help you grow but then they are, that's their specialty, right? They, they, they're kind of an advisor. I like, uh, you know, you've probably heard this term, uh, seeking alpha or chasing return, chasing yield. That's what I would say um, confidently over 85% advisors in America do. That's their specialty. They are accumulation advisors. In other words, building up what you have while you're in your working years and your earning capacity years, they're really about getting that um, that growth and that build up so that you can get to a certain place at retirement. And so I've had many clients over the years that have literally worked with an advisor for 20 or 30 years but then they get to retirement and they go to that same advisor, they've had this long-term, tremendously great relationship, productive and successful, and they ask that advisor, what am I gonna do when I retire? What am I gonna spend? What am I gonna sell to spend first? What am I gonna, what's my yield on my portfolio? Where's my income gonna come from? What's my cash flow? What's my taxes? And all of a sudden they're looking to somebody who is really truly a money manager, an investment manager for a financial plan. And that's where there is a big disconnect in America, a big, big, big X disconnected because you don't go to your accumulation advisor who has been really good at just growing your portfolio and all of a sudden say, whoop, time out. After 20 or 30 years, we need to completely change direction, change strategy, change what our goal is because we need now reliable cash flow from now through age 100. You've just asked that money manager, that investment manager, to become your financial planner. And most money managers simply are not and do not do that. And the other problem, of course, with staying with an accumulation advisor that you've had a long-term relationship with, even if they've done a great job for you, is that your needs change and your risk tolerance definitely changes when you are no longer working. Think about it, when you're working and you have a paycheck coming in, you're not necessarily concerned. I mean, obviously we always check and we're always trying to make sure our investments are on track, but we're not necessarily concerned if the market has a bad year or a good year because two things are happening. We have a long investment horizon um, from the time we start work till the time we finish work. You know, most people work at least 30 years of their lifetime. So we've got 30 years to, the market can get it wrong sometimes, that's okay. So that 
that's the first thing is that we start to become risk adverse because we no longer have that 30 year horizon. In fact, we don't have any horizon. We now are retired. And that's the second thing that changes is we've lost our income from our job. And now the entire shift of the income comes onto our portfolio to derive the cash flow that we need. So now that we are out of time as far as investment horizon goes, and we're now living or distributing this money, we have to start to consider, all right, is it okay if we take a 20% loss if the market has a crash? Are we going to be okay with a 20% loss and yet still pull out the $100,000 that we need to live off of or the $200,000 or the $75,000 or the fifty, dollars whatever your income level need is? Um, you know, are we going to pull that out? So that you're asking somebody who is used to really chasing return for you to all of a sudden get on board with the fact that you don't want to take the same level of risk anymore. So you see that they did a great job accumulating for you when you had the luxury of and time on your side and you had the luxury of other income that wasn't relying on the portfolio on your side. And now you've asked them to completely change everything they're doing by giving you a written plan, telling you how you're going to spend down your money, use your assets, and you want to take less risk. And all of this is what you're expecting from somebody who is really a money manager. That's how our practice is really different. We understand that you must have an actual plan. And our plan, of course, because I am a tax lawyer, always does have an actual tax component. So if you're watching, you're going to see me hold up an example of one of our plans for a sample client that runs through age 100. And in this plan, we are doing many, many things that take you leaps and bounds above just a standard accumulation advisor to achieve financial success in retirement and through and to death. And I like to do all of our plans to age 100 unless a client specifically tells me that there is a limit on their lifespan for some specific reason. And there are those those things that are the case. But what we do on this plan is we really granularly with uh, two spouses or a single person, you know, we are really looking at the S&P 500. We do a 20 year look back. That allows us to capture something called sequence of return risk. So where most uh, financial advisors that are money managers go wrong, investment managers, is they just buy a financial modeling software because they don't really, um, they're not really a true financial planner and they just want to give their client what we call a Monte Carlo probability, which is just a, a multivariate regression analysis, a mathematical multivariate regression analysis. If you know statistics at all, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a multivariate regression analysis on um, basically a hundred different thousand scenarios at all one time giving us a, a high degree of confidence in a statistical probability of you being able to pull out a certain amount of income for a certain amount of years. And so what most financial advisors or investment managers do that aren't really true income planners or you know financial planners is they will just uh, do a software modeling for you where you're going to get that Monte Carlo uh, statistical probability of success. And so your advisor will run that for you and they'll say, oh, look, you've got a 99% chance or a 95% chance or a 90% chance of being able to have this much money for the next 30 years. The problem, of course, is that that, um, that Monte Carlo is built off of really two false uh, premises from the beginning. And since the, the Monte Carlo was built off of two false premises, which are the two biggest premises and inputs that go into building the model, uh, it's completely false and it's not going to bear out. And so what are those two false premises when uh, we are using Monte Carlo uh, modeling for financial success? The first one is they plug in a rate of return and it's not variable. So they give you, let's say they plug in a six to 7% rate of return and there you go, there's your six to 7% rate of return that's going to hit every single year. We know that's not how the market works. The market has good years and the market has bad years. So over here where you're seeing in the red, these represent the loss years of the S&P. So if we're just going to put in 6 to 7% every year, we're going to have a much higher percentage of probability of success because we've never actually inserted the loss years. And that's what happens is maybe I'll get a 10%, maybe the market will go down, you know, uh, 
10%, then maybe the market comes back 20%. So maybe that averages out to a six or seven. I don't know, I haven't done that math. I'm just giving you a quick example off the top of my head. The point is the average of six or seven is not what actually is happening when your market is account is growing up, then it's losing, and then it's growing from the loss position. That is never incorporated. That sequence of return risk is never incorporated into these financial models. The second thing that they, do that is completely false um, is they put in a fixed tax rate. And even us, we have a, one of the best financial modeling tools in the world, and yet it only allows me to put in three times for the entire plan where the tax rate might change. So I'm able to start with a tax rate of say 25%, but then I'm only able to change that three times for that person's remainder of their lifetime and they might live another 30 or 40 years. Completely inaccurate on its face, just a fallacy. So we're building these financial modeling on two things that are just totally inaccurate. And so we're not going to have an accurate plan. So a, a decumulation or a spending advisor who manages your investment takes on a different role. They put on a different hat. They're going to look at your plan from a written perspective of getting that statistical probability really high. And now I'm speaking to you just specifically about what our practice does and asking you to really think about, is this the kind of advisor that you need to find for yourself? You need to find somebody who knows that they need to do true financial modeling and projections, incorporating the sequence of return risk, and certainly incorporating the tax law changes that we know are coming, that we've talked about on this podcast and that I've been preparing you guys for. Just literally on March the 18th, we had the administration's press secretary announce on a press conference, uh, I think in response to a question where she was asked, you know, that $400,000 level of cap gains where you no longer get capital gains treatments, but you get ordinary income treatment, she clarified that is not $400,000 earnings per person, but per household. So now we're dropping the earnings to about $200,000 per person if you have a two person household of earners, and that's a huge difference. So I'm just preparing you that the tax law changes that will be coming between now and 2030 are going to be quite aggressive. Um, the estate tax law changes that this administration is already proposing is already something that we see a huge uh, leap forward in aggressive tax policy. So there's a lot of changes. And so you cannot deal with solely an investment manager who doesn't have any tax expertise or tax knowledge and who just uses a financial tool that only allows you to change the tax rates three times in the next three decades or four decades. That is not workable. So these are all the difference between an investment manager and a true financial planner that is going to be able to reduce the risk once you're retired because you no longer want to take so much risk since that is your sole source of income on top of Social Security. And you really do need a written income plan. And you need a plan that is not based on uh, two false premises from the very beginning and gives you a false sense of hope. These are all the things that are go into a true income plan, reverse engineering a real solid tax strategy, and all of the things that advisors like myself do. And that is really going to give you a leap and bound above where you'd be if you just dealt with a true income um, an investment only advisor for the rest of your life. So that's the difference between accumulation advisors and actual financial planners that are managing towards a plan, a goal, and managing all the things that go into that goal, which includes taxes and includes market volatility. So I hope you got a lot out of this podcast today. Until next time, enjoy uh, life and come back for Crashes and Taxes. And also subscribe to the podcast. Give us five-star reviews if you can. That really helps us get this information to as many people as possible. Share it with your friends. And for those of you that do. And I really appreciate those of you that written out to our practice and said, hey, we really love your crashes and taxes. We don't miss an episode. That is so encouraging. That's why we do it. And we really appreciate it. Until then, until next time, have a